Ever wondered what's going on in the brain of someone struggling with depression? In this video, we'll delve into the complex world of neuroscience to explore the fascinating and often misunderstood world of depression. From neurotransmitters to brain regions, we'll break down the latest research to give you a deeper understanding of what happens in the depressed brain. Whether you're looking to learn more about your own mental health or want to support a loved one, this video is for you. So, let's dive in and uncover the intricacies of the depressed brain together. Sadness versus Depression Depression, a complex mental health condition, affects millions of individuals worldwide, manifesting in various forms and intensities. Understanding the multifaceted nature of depression is crucial in identifying effective solutions that can lead to recovery and improved quality of life. The solutions to depression are not one-size-fits-all, rather, they encompass a wide array of therapeutic approaches, lifestyle changes, and supportive measures that can be tailored to meet the unique needs of each individual. Sadness can be momentary or for a short period of time. Depression is nothing but continual extreme sadness over longer periods of time. It is important to recognize that depression is not a disease, but a syndrome. Unlike a cold or fever, it is highly subjective and can only be understood by analyzing the symptoms described by the patient. Your depression, to be qualified as clinical depression, it must last long for more than two weeks. Most patients suffering from chronic do not engage themselves busily. They prefer to remain free from formal work, which contributes to their sadness. Idleness permits the free flow of thoughts. Sad ones derive pleasure from feeling sad, often referred to as melancholic ecstasy. Medical professionals explain a variety of reasons for the cause of depression, such as hormonal imbalances, genetics, changes in the environment, and high stress levels. Hormones such as dopamine and serotonin are responsible for various vital functions like mood, motivation, cognitive abilities, self-confidence, and so on. Now, let us examine the fundamental causes of sadness or depression. Cognitive error, the underlying cause of depression. Cognitive error, also known as cognitive distortion, is basically a distorted perception of reality. It's a faulty assessment of reality. This includes excessive focusing on either the positives or negatives of life, situation, person, or anything. Cognitive error, bias, deludes your perspective and makes you stay away from the ground reality. For example, if you are experiencing intense negative emotions, triggered by an undesirable event, immediately you come to the conclusion that it's over. I'm all messed up, or I'm dead. Cognitive errors lead to a catastrophizing attitude where the mind prepares itself for the worst possible outcome and fails to recognize other possible outcomes, including positive or neutral ones. Neurology of a depressed brain. Please take a look at the diagram, explaining the transmission of neural impulse, which is responsible for cognition and cognitive consciousness. A neuron is basically a pathway for the nerve impulse through neural transmitters, others, through neural synapse to reach the prefrontal cortex of our brain, where the rational decision-making happens. This is a natural involuntary function that should happen routinely whenever we hear or receive any neural impulses. Synapse is the junction between two neurons. It is a physiological continuity between two nerve cells. Thus, synapse is a part of the nervous system. It serves as the structural basis of communication between the neurons in the central nervous system and between muscle cells and neurons in the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves that branch out from the brain and spinal cord. These nerves form the communication network between the central nervous system and the body parts. 
The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. The brain controls how we think, learn, move, and feel. The spinal cord carries messages back and forth between the brain and the nerves that run throughout the body. As per National Library of Medicine, the best evidence that serotonin plays a role in the pathophysiology of depression comes from studies of tryptophan depletion, where an acute dietary manipulation is employed to produce a transient lowering in brain serotonin activity through diminishing availability of its precursor amino acid, tryptophan. Serotonin in the brain regulates and is often referred to as the body's natural feel-good chemical. When serotonin levels are normal, one feels more focused, emotionally stable, happier, and calmer. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter made in your brain. It plays a role as a reward center and in many body functions, including memory, movement, motivation, mood, attention, and more. Low levels of serotonin and dopamine are associated with depression. Sadness or happiness are essentially emotions, and emotions are driven by thoughts. Thoughts are a form of energy. There is a minute gap between neurons known as a neural synapse, which is filled by thoughts, energy, providing a similar effect to an electric current. This energy is picked up by neural transmitters, supplemented by the serotonin and dopamine hormones combined with thoughts, energy, to transfer the neural impulses across the neurological system. Serotonin and dopamine hormones play a crucial role in transferring the neural impulse through neural transmitters across the neurological system. Neural transmitters, with serotonin and dopamine, are responsible for cognitive functions. Neurotransmitters are indispensable chemical messengers that facilitate bodily functions. Their primary role is to convey signals, messages, from one neuron, nerve cell, to the subsequent target cell, which can be another nerve, a muscle cell, or a gland. Please take a look at the diagram, depicting neural synapses and neural transmitters. Your body has a vast network of nerves, your nervous system, that send and receive electrical signals from nerve cells and their target cells all over your body. Your nervous system controls everything from your mind to your muscles, as well as organ functions. In other words, nerves are involved in everything you do, think, and feel. Your nerve cells send and receive information from all body sources. This constant feedback is essential to your body's optimal function. As serotonin, dopamine, and neural transmitters combined with thoughts, energy, facilitate cognition through neural synapses. Reduction of serotonin and dopamine affects cognition, leading to cognitive error, supplemented with catastrophizing thought patterns. Our thoughts are a form of energy, they constantly vibrate at a certain frequency and possess intensity. With every thought, you lose a certain quantum of energy. Toxic thoughts drain out all the energy, and healthy thoughts maintain our energy. Thoughts are very powerful. They play a critical role in maintaining the vital functions of the body. Every physical illness has a psychological component that causes inflammation and pain. Pain caused by a psychological component is called psychosomatic pain. If you are stressed and worried for longer periods, you develop ulcers or a wide variety of disorders like heart palpitations and so on. It's proven scientifically that negative thoughts like sadness, hate, or envy affect physical health. Depression affects your physical health, too. Healthy thoughts like love and gratitude add to your health, unhealthy thoughts like grudges and anger add to your sickness. Human mind and body are two faces of the same coin called spirit, which bears life.